Good evening, Australia. Welcome to the show. This is Tough Times Never Last, and I'm Michael Kazilny. Uh, I'm a criminal defence lawyer. been around the courts for many years, and we started the show many years ago. And first we had uh, a lot of ex-police and ex-prisoners, and then after a while we had some lovely people who went through difficult times. And I've always been inspired by their stories. Uh, their stories of hope and second chances. People who've gone through difficult times and with a positive attitude, um, have become happy again. On tonight's uh, couch, Nicole McLean. On the 12th of October 2002, some disgraceful terrorists went to Bali, and we all remember the Bali bombings. Uh, Nicole was a victim of those bombings, and she, I believe, was the only person on the dance floor who didn't die on that terrible night. Nicole, it was your first night on... Uh, at the Paddy's Bar? Yeah, we had arrived on the island uh, about three o'clock that day. And the girlfriends of mine said, come on, let's go out for the night. And I didn't really want to go that night. But they all said it was our first night and let's go out and have some fun. So I did it. Um, was We were only in the club for 45 minutes. And then the bomb went off. Mm. And uh, federal police worked out through mapping and whatnot that I was a metre away from the suicide bomber. Mm. So why I'm here today, I don't know. And you know, you, you, you've you got such a beautiful smile and even when I met you um, uh, a few weeks ago, such such a good energy. We, we all have vibes, but I, I just felt your lovely energy because most people uh, have self-pity parties and worry about silly things and they no. go, oh, I'm all depressed and everything, but you went through one of the most horrific things somebody could go through, you lost your arm, and and you're here with a positive attitude, whereas you could be on antidepressants. Well, I just feel, I always look at life and I think there's always someone else worse off. Um, I got through what I did, it took a long time. I had to go to rehab, I had to learn how to walk, I had to learn how to sit, I had to learn how to feed myself. I was a child again and I had to go back to basics and relearn everything. Mm. And I would be at rehab and I'd look around and there'd be someone that was worse off than me and I thought, no, we can keep going and same mm. with that person. You're it was... a beautiful soul, Nicole. I remember when it first happened and I remember I think 60 minutes away there but I, I saw the dance floor and, and, and I think I, I saw you being interviewed and the bar was like this, wasn't it? And you were at the bar there. And was there a car outside? Is that, how, how did... That was Sari Club. Oh, that was Sari Club. Yeah. And a friend of mine, we were in Paddy's Bar first and Paddy's Bar had the suicide bomber who walked in with a backpack and I was a metre away from him. So, but just prior to that, a friend that my girlfriend who I was there with, she said, let's go to Sari Club now. And I said, no, 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 I just want to hear what the next song is. Oh, something happened there too. Now, if I had have gone when she had said, let's leave, yeah. we would have been crossing that main road, going into Sari Club where the van was, yeah. that was chocker block full with um, lockers. And then the lockers were filled with metal. So when that bomb went off, it let off a massive expo explosion. And then it ripped right through Sari Club, which was a thatch roof hut. So the whole thing just took off. Oh, so, yeah. So a lot of people don't know what happened, but no, th 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 there was um, a couple of explosions, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know, the, I know. When the bomb went off, it left a big crater in the ground right out the front of the Sari Club. Yeah. So we would. There was no way we would have been here if that's what had happened. But for some reason, I chose to stay to hear that next song, and the bomb went off. Yes, it was bad, but Sari Club was a lot worse. Mm. Were, were you knocked out at the time? Did you? Yeah, yeah, I was. I didn't feel like it. I felt like I was straight back up, but uh, I was out for about 45 minutes because I remember coming to and there was smoke everywhere and sirens and people yelling and car horns and um, alarms going off. 
and that's when I knew that I'd been out mm. for a little while. And I tried to get back up again, but my right thigh had also been blown out, back to bone. Um, my arm was still attached, but only by skin. And I had a hole in my back, which the doctors described was the size of an AFL football. They could have sat a whole football in there perfectly. God bless you, darling. And then about 20 bullet holes all over my body from oh shrapnel and burns across my back shoulders. And so I certainly copped it, but... Um, the old saying goes, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, and I 100% believe that. And, and sometimes you get these shark victims who lose a leg and they say, oh, I couldn't feel any pain initially. No. Same for you? Yeah, well, I think adrenaline had kicked in, but I was all I wanted to do was close my eyes and go to sleep. I was exhausted, and it was my girlfriend that had pulled me out that um, kept slapping me on the face and saying, don't you leave me, stay with me. She said I was grey. Like I had And your that girlfriend? Much. Yeah. She was there too? Yep. Injuries? Uh, she, luckily, she wasn't injured terribly bad. She had burns on her hand and across her shoulders. So she was just ripping T-shirts off people and, and tying them around my body and put, putting them in holes of my body and mm. to try and stop the bleeding. So, Nicole, it, it was a two-week holiday planned? Yeah. This happened in the first 24 <laughs> first, hours? Yeah. And then I was registered on the first Hercules out of Bali because I was the most critical. They put me on the first Hercules. And then once I got on, they decided, no, she's her condition slipping. They operated on the tarmac and put me on the second Hercules out of Bali. Did you know anyone else at the, uh, the hotel, the pub? Yeah, I was there with three others and they were all, well, I say they were all fine. Obviously, mm. they've, they've come out scarred in some way, but I was out of all of them, I was the worst injured. Yeah. Mm. Have you been to Bali since? Yes, we went back four months later. Mm -hmm. um, I, I thought that I would get something out of it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to leave Bali with better memories. Mm. Yes, I did, but those memories are all... There's some things you can't, you can't take away. Of course not. Nicole, it must have been a, such a difficult time after that. Tell us about the journey after when you were going through the low times and how you picked yourself up? I, I, my memory was fading and I couldn't remember things and even words in, in general conversation. And so I'd speak to doctors about it and they would say to me, oh, it's anaesthetic. You've had 25 anaesthetics in two weeks. Mm. Um, that's a lot. Some people don't even have one anaesthetic in a lifetime. And it can take 12 months for anaesthetic to leave the system. So yeah, it's a lot of wear and tear on your body. So I thought, okay. Time went on and it really wasn't getting any better. So I went to a neuropsychologist and ran through some tests and whatnot. And then afterwards she said that I had post-traumatic stress disorder. And I thought, no, I don't think I do. Like I, I have, I've never had a problem talking about it. I will talk to anybody who wants to know. Um, and I said, okay, well, what can we do? How do I fix this? We might talk, talk about how you fix that after the next break, but thank you so much for coming on. And viewers, thank you very much for tuning in. We'll be back very shortly. Tough times never last. I'm Michael Gazilny. Thank you so much for watching. If you're going through a difficult issue tonight, wherever you are uh, around Australia, remember tomorrow's another day. Remember that nothing lasts forever. Everything's impermanent. And if you are going through maybe uh, a breakup, maybe uh, bankruptcy, maybe um, you're suffering from a medical illness, just go through it until times get better. Uh, 12th of October 2002, um, only seems like yesterday, but uh, a terrible time in Bali. Um, we remember it as the Bali bombings. 202 people uh, passed away, God bless them. I think another 250 were seriously injured. Nicole was there and uh, got through it. And uh, all these years later, she um, has turned her life around into a positive and a happy life. I think two weeks after the bombings, um, you were told that you were going to lose your right arm. How did that feel when the doctor told you that? To me, there was never a decision to be made. Um, I was told that my right arm had a severe infection. Septicemia was kicking into my body and shutting down all my major organs. So it was either I kept an arm and died or um, I took my arm off and survived. Although there, was, there would be a good chance I would survive. Yes. So uh, they had to take it back to where they could find good tissue growth. And lucky for me, 
I survived, but I was given 48 hours. They didn't think that, yeah. Well, I'm glad you're here because you're such a inspiration to many people. And, and Nicole, um, having one arm, is it, um, does it take a long time to sort of think, hey, that's cool, I only need one arm? Yeah, I remember when, my, when I got home from hospital and my mum said, Nicole, I think you must have been ambidextrous because you seem to take to things so easily. Yeah. Um, probably the hardest thing would have been writing. Yeah. My handwriting looked like I was just training again. It was a four-year-old's handwriting. Yeah. Um, and it took me a long time to write a couple of sentences. But with time, like everything, mm. um, you improve and you get better. And now my handwriting looks just the way it did 14 years ago. Mm. And when you got home, you had a beautiful um, family there. No, well, you didn't have your kids then, did you? No. So I was only 23 when yes. Bali happened, still living at home, yeah. had the life. And um, so it was great. Um, I took my time learning how to redo things. My mum was there to help me. Um, and then it was only 12 months later I decided that I wanted to move out with my then boyfriend, who was now my husband. Um, yeah, we decided that we'd move out together and and give it a go. And, yeah, we've now been there ever since. got two beautiful children. Yeah. Nine and four. They must be very uh, inspired with mum. You've written a, a great book called... Uh, Stronger Now. yeah. Yeah, just with my whole tale of recovery and Amazing. and that life does go on. It's a story of hope. What are some of the key points in that book? Basically, that if you if you want to to move on, you can, but you have to want to. Otherwise, you will get stuck in the dark days. Um, and if you want something bad enough, you will get it. Mm. Yeah, that's so true, folks, isn't it? A lot of people um, uh, are living in the past. They might have gone through a difficult time and uh, they've been knocked down, but uh, time to get up again and uh, start with a fresh attitude because the more we look in the rear vision mirror and think about those difficult times, the more that expands just to time to move on and dust yourself off. And, and, and a lot of people too, I find, uh, have that central theme of disappointment running through their heads all the time. They come to me when I represent them in court and they go, oh, Michael, but I've lost my job. Oh, Michael, I've broken up in my marriage. It's not fair. I've gone bankrupt and I'm depressed. And, and I think at one stage, uh, we just have to um, get up and forget you about do. all that, don't we? You do. Because I remember when it first happened and, yeah, okay, it would have been easier to cry myself to, to sleep of a night or, and I would have had every right to. But 202 people lost their lives that night and I was spared mine for a reason and that was to get out there and live and do something and turn this negative in that had happened in my life into a positive. Mm, why overriding? I sometimes think, Nicole, going to a psychologist and talking about the past and getting into that negative mindset, I, I don't know whether it's good. Well, this was the whole thing. I mean, I was, I was told that, yes, if I wanted to get over post-traumatic uh, post stress, that I could go and speak to somebody. But even the neuropsychologist said to me, but you don't even have any problem talking about it, so this is a bit of a tough one. Mm. And so I sort of went off on my own and, and tried different things to, to make me feel better and to get my head around what had happened. Tell me about um, the mind. Tell me about... Oh, it's 100% power of the mind. I mean, I started doing meditation. Um, I was seeing a Reiki healer. I was doing yoga and still do three nights a week. And I just think it's about, I think it's about clearing the mind and getting into a better headspace. Mm. I think we're so busy in life and we just... We, stop, we, we forget to stop and smell the roses as such. Mm. Life is just so fast paced and, um, and we're missing a lot. I noticed that when I met Nicole a few weeks ago, um, she, uh, she had a really good, really good calm energy. And uh, I think we're, we're, we can sense whether somebody's got good vibes or, or negative vibes, but she's got really good vibes. She just surrenders to um, whatever happens and uh, always got a beautiful smile on her face. And you're so right, um, clearing the mind of all that stuff because it seems like we're all running around asking each other whether we're busy and mm -hmm. it's almost like we, there's all this chaos and frustration when really life is so simple, isn't it? It is. I think we make life hard. Mm. And I think when bad things happen, I mean, bad things still happen in my life, what not, what not but of course. I think that it's a memory and, and you deal with it and then in soon, sometime, in, in some time it'll become a memory and you won't even think about it anymore. Or, mm. But we, I think we focus too much on the now and we need to look at the future and see that there's better things out there and mm. things will get better if you want it to. You have to want it to happen. At one stage I remember you guys all got together. Was it somewhere on the Sydney Rocks? I remember uh, a media 
story. And there was a, what, about 14 people? Yeah. Yeah? It was the first time. It was, it was straight after Bali happened and we got a phone call and um, asked if we all wanted to catch up. And I was, I was, I was more than happy to do it because even though I knew that Bali was huge and it affected so many people, you somehow feel like you're the only one it happened to and you were in this little bubble. And um, so meeting other people and hearing their stories and, and the way they got over things and the way they were dealing with it, it all varied. S- some people were angry, some people were bitter, some people were fine with it and it was great. It's all different stories we tell ourselves. Yeah. And, yeah. And that's so right. That's so true, f- folks, isn't it? Uh, it's, it's really the stories in our minds that uh, create our lives, isn't it? We'll be back very shortly with Nicole McLean. She's a lovely lady. Thank you so much for watching. Wherever you are in Australia, love and best wishes to you. Um, uh, and just remember, you're a beautiful and uh, kind-hearted person just the way you are. Because really do people tell us, uh, be the way you are. People are always backstabbing and trying to change us. And, you know, from school to parents to partners, always trying to change you. But just be the way you are. And I think that's a good starting point because uh, everyone's um, uh, ha- got a civil war going on inside, haven't they? Because everyone's telling you you're not good enough. And I think they should really teach us at school that life's going to come with uh, 10,000 joys and 10,000 sorrows, that 50% of your life is going to be full of problems you've got to get through and the other 50% full of joys. Because so many people leave school and think it's going to be all rosy and then they go through those challenges we all go through, relationships, money, stress, depression. And we've created a very stress-filled world. There's now millions of people suffering from anxiety and depression on antidepressants. Our suicide rates amongst our young people is increasing every year. And some people say by 2030, most of us in Western society will be depressed. So we really need to smile a bit more, Nicole, don't we? Absolutely. Cheer people up. Yeah, 100%. I know myself, if I see someone down the street that's moping around, they can almost bring you to their level. But if you smile and they see you smile, you can brighten up their day and it makes life so much nicer. It changes your energy when you smile, doesn't it? Of course it does. Doesn't it? Mm. Mm. But sometimes we just get a bit tired, don't we? Oh, we do. I'm always very enthusiastic in the morning, but you know, once you go to court, and you, it, it's not oh, much. Oh, well, look, about four o'clock, it yeah. can hit. And you're allowed to be. We, we're not always happy all the time and no. that's fine. And we're allowed to have good days and we're allowed to have bad days and that's just life. That's just life and, and relationships as well. Nothing in life's perfect, yeah. is it? No. We're all... Um, and social media plays a big part in that too. Yeah. I mean, there's people on there that, that carry on about how great life is and this you'd, you should be this, you should be that. And like I said, some people just have a bad day and they're allowed and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, you're right. We shouldn't judge people too much, will we? Nicole, what about some... Um, some uh, ladies watching who might be in domestic violence relationships and they they just don't know how to get out because they might be from another country and can't pay their bills and they're stuck in this environment where they're constantly being put down and getting beaten up. What would you say to people suffering from those sort of problems? Oh, that is such a tricky a tricky question. Um, I would just hope that, that they can see that there's so much support out there now. Um, I think back in the day there wasn't as much and women did stick around but now there's so much support and I just think that if they gave it a shot that things could be so much better for them but it's mm. taking that step and that's really scary mm. but if they can oh the do joys you, that come do you think um, a lot of people are masking their problems with too much alcohol and drugs do you find definitely that? yeah yeah I think if a lot of people got out there and tried tried alternative ways um, that they would feel 100%. I felt before I was seeing my Reiki healer, I felt full in my mind. I just felt like I had all these files in my head and I needed to clear some of them. And that's when a lot of people do turn to booze um, or alcohol or whatever to to clear the mind. Um, Whereas I found doing this, I felt 100% straight away. Mm, That's great. You you really touch your with your spirituality and yeah, uh, I think I think that uh, yeah, I can't rave enough about it. Mm. I do. I feel a hundred percent better doing it. Um, never one. Not that I, I know that a lot. There are a lot of people on antidepressants um, for lots of different reasons, and I don't. I'm not saying that it's not 
a great choice for them. Mm -hmm. But for me, these whole 14 years, I never once jumped on. Terrific. And you're so right, we're just covering the, masking the problem for a while, aren't we? You're putting a Band-Aid over it. At the end of the day, the store's store's still there. (laughs) Yeah, you're so right. We've really reached an age where we have to um, take care of the mind a lot more. More so than the body, I think. The, so True. many people ignore the mind because things have changed. There's so many thoughts going through our heads at the moment, isn't there? Well, I do I do yoga three nights a week and there's a chap that does the class with me. He's 86. Mm. And I just think, wow, that's fantastic. Now, he, he might need a wall to balance on or whatever, but he still gets in his car and he drives down and does the hour class. And I think now that's what I want to be like when I'm 86. Amazing. Are you still keen to talk to um, to different groups? You, you want to get back yeah. into that? Because yeah. you haven't for a while, have you? So I do. I also i am a spokesperson for another organisation called Limbs for Life. Oh, yeah. And that is where perhaps there might be somebody who's lost, their, lost a limb through cancer, car mm. accident or any sort of trauma. And I'll be put in contact with them and I can give them a call and just give them some reassurance of what to do and how you may feel and... Um, just knowing that I've lost my arm and look at me now, so you mm. could be the same if you want to. Um, and it's great, and I do get a lot out of it. Um, and then, yeah, doing um, a speaking circuit for companies. Um, I just think that, if, like I said, if I can turn my negative into a positive, if I, if I can help someone in some small way, then what happened to me that night in Bali is worth it. That's amazing. And how can people get in touch with you, Nicole? Uh, through um, my email. Um, What's that? Nicole A. McLean, 14, number 14, at hotmail.com. Okay. Um, Facebook. Oh, good. It's so easy to find yeah, people, isn't it? isn't it? So easy to stalk people, isn't it? It sure is. God, it's not like the 80s where you can get away with anything. These days people just check all the good <laughs> and all the bad. You don't even need to talk anymore. Here I am. You know everything about me. <laughs> That's right. And the book, Nicole, where can we get that from? Um, basically online now. Yeah, I wrote it uh, four years ago. So, yeah, so pretty much online it would be the best place to to hunt it up That's amazing. I'm going to do that on the weekend. I I really want to read it. I hope you enjoy it. And where's the great lady? What's... you're, you're sort of uh, enjoying every day, but uh, what, what are the goals for the next couple of years? What, uh, what are you working on? I know you're, you're a great mum, you're a great wife. Pretty much building a, building a life that I don't have to vacation from. I love that. That's where we're at. Building yeah. a life. Yeah, I like that. Building a life. And basically just want to spend the rest of my life laughing because I think that's where we need to be. Yeah. Nicole, thank you so much, darling, for coming on. You're a great inspiration. I really Pleasure. got a lot thank out of that. And um, Yeah, and thanks very much for coming on, folks. Um, yeah, whatever you're going through, nothing to fix. Just go through it. L- look at this great lady. Went through one of the uh, almost lost her life. She's still here. She's smiling. You're going to be smiling too. We're living in a beautiful country and you're surrounded by uh, beautiful people. Love and best wishes. We'll see you uh, next week. Good night. <laughs>